we all love and know the renowned editing application Adobe Photoshop. However, the idea of running the software as complex as Photoshop is directly in our browsers on the internet would have been hard to imagine just a few years ago. However, by using various new web technologies, Adobe has now brought a public beta version of Photoshop to the web. Truly incredible. Now, I think it's been out for about a year. I think it came out last year, so I'm a little bit late to the party, but let's dive in firsthand showing you guys how you can use Photoshop on the web. So first of all, how do we access Photoshop on the web? All you have to do is type in your web browser, photoshop.adobe.com. Once there, you can go ahead and import an image you would like to edit. So before you can start editing a photo, you do have to have a Creative Cloud subscription because this is not free. There's different subscriptions you can choose from as outlined on their website, which I will link that directly in the description down below so you can find that and you can choose a subscription or plan that works best for you. Now, if you only want the Photoshop Photoshop on the web, it's currently right now is $22.99 a month, but there is also a free trial. So if you just want to try it out and aren't really ready to commit yet, you can try the free trial and see if you even like it. You'll notice also on the website, it will say explore Photoshop online. And once you click on that, it will show several different tutorials that are super helpful for getting you started on using Photoshop online. So go ahead and let's click on get started in Photoshop on the web start tutorial. We're going to look at the very first hands on tutorial that helps us to basically jumpstart our process in Photoshop on the web. So it has some directions here on the right hand side. It says exploring layers in Photoshop on the web. Photoshop documents are made of layers that combine to form your artwork. Layers are great because you can edit each layer separately without affecting the other objects. So anyone who's ever used Photoshop obviously knows that you use layers and they're non-destructive. So over here is our layers panel. You will definitely notice that it is a bit higher and the location is slightly different compared to the desktop version where it was a little bit lower. So as you can see, our giraffe is hidden in the photo. You can't see it at all. All we see is the moon and the clouds and it's covering our giraffe. And it says number one in the layers panel, click the eye icon next to the layer called clouds and planet. Notice that this revealed all the artwork hidden below. Click the eye icon again to reveal the layer. So the next step is reordering layers. Now that the clouds and planet are visible again, you can no longer see the artwork that is stacked under the layer. Let's try dragging the clouds and planet layer under some of the others to see what happens. It says, number one, in the layers panel, click and drag the clouds and planet layer until it is underneath the waterfall and giraffes layer. All of the layers are now visible on the canvas because you moved the clouds and planet layer to the bottom. Next is moving layers on the canvas. So you can use layers of different sizes and shapes to make really cool artwork. In this piece, let's see what the moon looks like if we were to move it slightly to the right. So it ha we have a couple of steps. Step one, it says in the layers panel, select the moon layer. So we're gonna select the moon layer. Then step number two, is in the toolbar select size and position and then we're going to select the move tool and then step number three is on the canvas click and drag the moon to the right until you're happy with its with the placement so the moon is currently on the left and we're just going to click and drag it to the right so that was fairly easy right so go ahead and click next and now we're moving on to transforming layers so the transform tool also lets you make a layer larger or smaller on the canvas. So you're able to also rotate the layer or flip the layer vertically or horizontally. So let's go ahead and rotate the moon so that the crescent faces down. And we're gonna click the layers panel to make sure that the moon layer is still selected, which it is. Then in the toolbar to the left, we're going to select size and position and then choose the transform tool. The keyboard shortcut for that is Alt Control T. So using the contextual taskbar, we're going to click the rotate button twice so that the visible part of the moon is on top. Then you can click done. 
So now you can click next and we're gonna be moving on into zooming into the canvas. So we're gonna learn how to zoom. So do you see the people standing on a bridge near the end of the waterfall? Might be kind of hard to see, right? It says they're hard to see, but, the, but if we zoom in, they'll become much clearer. So we have three steps to follow once again. The first step is find the people standing on the bridge on the right side of the waterfall. They are directly under the smaller direct. And then number two says at the top of the workspace, up right here, click the zoom percentage drop down menu, then choose 200%. Alternatively, you can use the shortcut command two or control two to set the zoom to 200. And then step number three is to hold the space bar and drag the canvas until you locate the people on the bridge. Now to click next, and then we're going to start removing small imperfections. So in Photoshop on the web, you can use the spot healing brush to remove small imperfections from an image, much like in the desktop version. So there's once again, three steps to follow. The first step is in the toolbar, select retouch, then select spot healing brush tool. And then step number two is to use the brush size settings slider to change the brush size to about 25 pixels. And then step number three, in the layers panel, select waterfall and giraffes, then drag the brush over the bridge and the people above the waterfall. Notice how the spot healing brush quick made quick work of removing the people and the bridge. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. So it was pretty effortless. So once that's completed, you can go ahead and click next and onto our last step. The last step, number seven, is talking about cropping your image. If you wanted to show your artwork on your Instagram story, for example, you might use the crop tool to change the dimensions to a nine by 16 rectangle. So this is perfect for social media. And we're in three steps. We're gonna show you how to do this. And the first step, it says in the toolbar, select size and position, and then select your crop tool. And number two, under resize presets, choose Instagram story. So we're gonna choose Instagram story and then select done to commit the changes. So this is super simple. And make sure that you readjust the photo so that it fits the screen so that you can actually see what you're doing when you're cropping the image. So when I hit these three dots, you will see that enables the more options menu which drops down and then you can see the different uh, resize presets that are available and it's not only for instagram but it's also for facebook tiktok youtube and linkedin so this is really cool that it um, allows you to resize for all the different types of social media and once you select that you're able to maneuver your photo exactly how you want it so that whatever is showing in the crop section will be in frame and you won't have an odd looking or off looking photo so i'm trying to get both of, i'm trying to get both of the giraffes in this frame so it should look something like this when you're done and that's pretty much it for the photoshop on the web tutorial so it's not that much different from the desktop version it may look a little bit different but it's fairly simple fairly easy to use probably even easier to use than the desktop version and you can also collaborate on this one, which is pretty cool. Adobe has aimed to make it easy to collaborate on files by sharing links with someone else. So even if the person doesn't have an, a subscription, you can still share links with them to your work or collaborate with them. So here is a quick walkthrough created by Adobe on how you can basically collaborate while using Photoshop online or Photoshop on the web.
Some noticeable difference that I noticed between Photoshop on the web is that it does look notably different compared to the desktop version. It appears to be more geared towards beginners because the full names of the tools are written out in the user interface. So it makes it a lot easier to be able to identify immediately what everything is and it's a lot clearer and a lot less more difficult compared to the desktop version where you it's more of a learning curve and you sort of have to kind of already know it or learn it before you can fully utilize it or know what it does and what it is there are a few things that are missing some noticeable ab absences from the toolbox is that there's currently no patch tool nor pen tool or the polygonal lasso tool and smart objects aren't supported either. So those are a few things to be aware of that are no longer in the online version of Photoshop. And Adobe says it's working to add these to the online version of Photoshop, but for now they're not there. You can even work between Photoshop online and the desktop version, which is pretty cool. As long as you're signed into your Adobe account, you can switch between the two. So you don't have to ever worry about losing your work because it will all be automatically saved because your documents are stored as cloud documents and they can be opened in the desktop version of Photoshop or downloaded as image files. Photoshop on the web automatically saves your work to your cloud documents and it'll perform a save if you switch to the desktop app or another browser tab. Thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you got some value out of it. And if you would like to learn about all the new features for Photoshop 2024, definitely go back and check my previous video on what's new on all the Photoshop features. And you can check that video out right here.